In the first video on multimode heat transfer, we looked at multimode heat transfer through a flat wall. This time we're going to look at it through a cylinder. So just like the difference between conduction through a flat wall versus a cylinder, you're going to see the equations change when you have a cylinder because you don't have a constant surface area. Your surface area is going to change with your radius, and so you have to account for that even when you're looking at multimode heat transfer. Otherwise, the equations look pretty similar. Let's take a look at a multimode heat transfer problem in a cylinder. Here we go. We've got hot water flowing through a metal pipe, so there's our cylinder. We have the pipe right under an HVAC vent, so we're blowing air over the pipe. We have some information about our system involving the pipe, and we want to figure out the rate of heat transfer from the water to the air. Now this is multi-mode because you are going through both convection from the air to the pipe and the pipe to the water. You also have conduction through the pipe. So first we'll get started with drawing our system so we can see exactly what is going on in our system. All right, there's our system. We have water inside the pipe, we have air outside the pipe, we have our outside and our inside radius, and we have heat. Since we have hot water, our heat is coming out into the air, which is, of course, cooler than hot water. All right, so we have our general equation for heat transfer. Since we have multi-mode heat transfer, we have conduction and convection together, we're going to use our overall heat transfer coefficient which is one of the things we are asked to solve for. First, let's write the equation for the rate of heat transfer. All right, there we go, our equation for heat transfer. Notice we're using the overall heat transfer coefficient because we do have two different modes of heat transfer and we have to account for them both. We have our area term A, and notice that I wrote TO minus TI. Why did I write them in this particular order? Well, we're asked for the rate of heat transfer from the water to the air. Since the water is at a higher temperature than the air, that means the water is giving heat to the air. And since the water is giving heat or losing heat, Q should be negative. So by putting the smaller temperature here, TO, our air temperature, minus our larger temperature, Ti, the temperature of the water, that's going to give us a negative Q. That's why I wrote the temperatures in that particular order. The order of the temperatures depends on the direction of heat transfer. It's whatever is going to give you the right sign on your heat transfer. So you have to think carefully about your system when you do this. We're given enough information to calculate our area. We are given our temperatures. We need to solve for Q. And we also need to solve for U, the overall heat transfer coefficient. Since we have two unknowns in this particular equation, we're going to need another equation to solve for U. So let's write that down now. There you have it. This is how we're going to find U. Let's go through these terms one by one. This term right here, the 1 over HIAI term, is your term for the convection of heat between the water and the pipe. So the eyes mean the inside of the pipe. This is the convection between the water and the pipe wall. This middle term here with the natural log is the term for the conductive heat transfer through the pipe from the inside wall to the outside wall. This third term is the convective heat transfer between the outside of the pipe and the air. And that's where the subscript O's come from. So this is pipe wall to air. Now before we go ahead and plug everything in, we need to solve for our area terms first. And our area terms are the surface area of the pipe. So if you were to unroll that pipe into a flat sheet, the dimensions of the sheet would be the length of the pipe on one side and then 2 pi r on the other side because you're looking at the circumference of that pipe, which is 2 pi r, or if you have the diameter, 
pi d. So 2 times the radius is equal to the diameter. You can use whichever one you prefer. I'll give you the exact same answer. So let's go ahead and calculate ai and ao. Okay, so our inside surface area is 0.37 centimeters squared. Our outside surface area is 0.518 meters squared. And notice that I use the inside radius for the inside area, the outside radius for the outside area. It's the same length. The pipe is the same length all the way along. It's just the radii that change, and that's what gives you your inside versus outside area. So now that we have our inside and outside area, we can go ahead and plug in all our information to get 1 over UA. When we crunch through all those numbers, we find out that 1 over UA is 0 0.0243. And that means if we take the reciprocal of that and solve for UA, this is what we get. All right, UA is 41.1 watts per Kelvin. And if you think, okay, well, watts per Kelvin is a pretty funny unit. Where did that come from? The units on U are watts per meter squared Kelvin. The units on A are meter squared. So the meter squared and meter squared in the denominator cancels out. So you just are left with watts per Kelvin. And that's fine because if you look back up here at this equation, if we plug UA in directly, we have watts per Kelvin multiplied by Kelvin. And that goes away. We're left with watts, which is what the units on Q are. So we are all set. So we can plug in 41.1 for the quantity UA. We don't actually have to pull them apart unless we're asked to solve for U which we are. We need the overall heat transfer coefficient. So now we have a dilemma. Which overall heat transfer coefficient do we want? And if you're thinking, well, there's only one. No, actually there's two because UA together is a pair. And if you wanted to separate out U, you would need to make a choice. Do you want AI or do you want AO? Because they are different. And so if you solve for U by dividing by AI, you're going to get a different overall heat transfer coefficient than if you solve for it by dividing by AO. We can solve that problem by saying, well, we have UIAI as a pair and UOAO as a pair. So if we go through and solve for UI and UO, here's what we get. All right, now you can see that UI is quite a bit larger than UO. And that makes sense because the inside area is smaller than the outside area. And if we want the quantity UA to be the same, regardless of where our area is, our inside overall heat transfer coefficient has to be bigger to compensate for the smaller area. Regardless of if you're using UI or UO, you have to pair it with the correct area. And when you do, you're going to get, for this problem, UA equals 41.1. So now we have the information we need to solve for Q. So let's do that and see what our rate of heat transfer is. So our Q here is equal to 1850 watts. So you can see we used a very similar equation here to solve for Q as we would for a flat wall, but how we get U, our overall heat transfer coefficient, is a bit different. It's this conduction term that is different here. You do have to account for the radii when you're calculating conduction through a pipe. So just remember, when you have pipes, make sure that you use this particular term for the conduction because it does account for the difference in radii which will change the area. And again, when the area changes, you have to use the right overall heat transfer coefficient. So just keep those things in mind when you are working with pipes or other types of cylinder 
and you should be able to correctly calculate not only the overall heat transfer coefficient, but also the rate of heat transfer.